Updating the student grading systems can be a lot of work, but it's worth it to have a fair and equitable system in place. It's also important to have a clear grading rubric. By following these, you can create a grading system that works for your student and your classroom. Hi everyone, how are you? I wish you all doing great. Have you ever experienced a system crash, especially when you were checking your CGPA result at the end of the semester? For me, that was a normal situation for a student because of the high volume traffic website. So here we are. In the course of CSC 408 Management Information System, we from class NAMA F4A are learning on how to develop and organize an efficient system by using Microsoft Excel. For the study purposes, we have invented a system called UniApps, UITM Online Application System. The UniApp was intended to help the program administrator examine the qualification of candidate who wish to continue their study on bachelor degree program in UITM. In this study context, we are focusing on the teaching English as a second language, TESOL, with their MUAD band qualification, and we are collaborating with the Malaysian Examination Council, also known as MPM. Lastly, we are convinced that the student admission result will be complete more quickly and it easier the work process for the program administrator just by using UniApps. Now, let's we explore further. At the left side of the page, we can see the navigation button that will bring, that will bring us to the home page of the uni apps. Okay, so this is how the, how the home page of uni apps looks like. Before I forget, we have the, also have the back button that will bring us to the previous page, which is a system introduction page. In this one. Can go back so just let like move to the home okay on this home page uh, at, and uh, on this home page authorized staff will have a full access to this system as you can see in the red box here we have made a drop down list of id staff who could access this system which is k01 k01 k02 k03 and k04 Okay, what happened when an authorized staff attempt to use this system? So let's say we just use K05. Okay, as we can see, the error alert message will pop up to give them the friendly reminder that they do not have clear access to use this system. So we believe that this system is a good and secure enough. So let's just use my ID number K01. Okay, in the box below, it will appear the name of the correspondent login ID, which is my name, Muhammad Izrul Zahin bin Muhammad Razali. Uh, we have used the VLOOKUP to extract the data from the employee data sheet. So next, we just click submit here. Okay, we are being put to the dashboard of UniApps. Uh, for your information, the dashboard of UniApp, the dashboard of UniApps just have four main function. Yeah, I will end here and allow my team member, Miss Nur Hidayah, to continue explain this function. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Hidayah and I act as the senior secretary for this project. I'll go over how to use UniApp CITM online application system for the three main parts which are employee personal data, admission results, and confirmation emails. Let us start with employee personal data. First and foremost, as seen here, the system displays the employee's name, employee ID, and position. On the right side, 
When you click on this image, you will be taken to the employee data page, which includes their ID, name, date of birth, position, and employee photo. This allows employee to check on the details of their team members. To return to the dashboard, you can click this back button and navigate to the desired page. Now, we go on to the admission result page where you can check students' mark result information. This indicates their marks obtained for each test component, which include listening, speaking, reading, and writing. It also categorizes their band score, their status, whether fail or pass, and their degree of English proficiency. Let, uh, let us check the outcome by picking their candidate ID. You can either pick the ID by clicking down the arrow, clicking down the arrow in the drop down list, just select the ID number and it will show the candidate's result. Second, you can search for the candidate ID by typing the ID number into the search box. Let me try to extract the ID number from our raw data for example. This is our raw data. You can click on the arrow symbol and the system will bring you to the first candidate information. I will pick random ID to fill in in the search box. We will see how accurate our system program is. Okay, let's pick an one. Uh, I'll choose this one, A22020. This information for students name Nor Eileen. So she got band 2. I'll go back to the home. Admission results. Okay. I'll paste here the ID number. Okay. So it will bring you Eileen's word result. However, if we enter the incorrect ID, the error alert message will appear immediately. For example, okay, it will pop up uh, this message. Sorry, we do not have your ID. This mail image function sends the candidate's result directly to their registered email address. When you click on the image, it will display the message successfully delivered. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. I am Norfa Zahia, SIT officer, and I will continue the presentation for column reporting. So, these are the pitch for uh, reporting. Okay, as you can see, we got uh, four different parts, which are individual performance, band analysis, result analysis, and last one is a user proficiency analysis. Each of the this following image, it has its own hyperlink data that connect the link navigation to every pages that we would like to choose. For example, if we put the cursor here, see the the hyperlink. So we will start with um individual for performance. So these are the page for individual performance. If we enter the student ID, these are the mark that we can conclude, obtain mark and also a get score. Okay, if we put the candidate number three. Okay, Arif Arafat Bin Ramli. If you change to number four candidate. Okay, now Atifa Binti Zainuddin. Okay. Uh, after we put a student ID, uh, it will appear scoring mark for all a component 
which are listening, speaking, reading, writing, and also we put here aggregate score. So the obtain mark for aggregate score. Okay. So the the formula that we use is a VLOOKUP function to look up the value in cell. Okay, this one. Cell F7 and the data from a sheet uh, called candidate data. Uh, this is our data. Okay, and then we use a false. Mm, the VLOOKUP function will return the value in the column of the range that match in the value respect to cell for the data that we have so okay this one 45 multiple 100 okay for listening uh, 45 multiple 100 for reading set 120 multiple 100 and for writing uh, 90 multiple by 100 and for aggregate score sum up of the um, total divide 400 and the answer will multiple by 100 so we uh, we also appear the band here okay so if we put uh, okay for example okay we also have um we also have a um, pop-up alert message. This is the function that we put. Okay, cancel. This is the function that we put. If we insert the ID other than candidate in our data. Okay, the system will pop-up error alert, alert message. Okay. So, these are the ability. Different candidate, different ability that they have. Okay, this is the score. Okay, see? The obtain mark will be different. This is the max mark. This is the obtain mark. Okay. Next, we will go to band analysis. So, if we go to band analysis, these are the slicer. The graph, the after click the image. Okay. We will straight to the band page. Uh, we use a bar chart and a graph to show band of the candidate between gender, male and female. Okay, these are the select multi-select function in a slicer. Okay. So if you can see here, it's only sorry. Okay, band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4. This is if I unselect them. Okay. So we can see here, for female, we got a 4% at band 1 and 1% band 1, 25% band 2, 32% for female at band 3, 28 at band 4, 36 at band 5 and only 1%, one, one candidate in uh, uh, that, that obtain uh, band 6. Okay. So next, we will go to result analysis. Okay. Result analysis. We use a chart to show result analysis where the candidate either pass or fail between gender again. So if I answer like this, we can see here female 66 uh, candidate that obtain pass and 60 candidate that fail for female. And for male, 26 fail and 48 pass. So we put all together. These are the graphs shown between a male and female to pass and fail the analysis. Okay. Okay. The last one, we go to user proficiency. User, we can conclude here from user proficiency by using a pie chart below from our data to show proficiency between candidate using slicer as data given. 
Oke. Okay. Okay. If we choose limited, we have 40 candidate. For models, we have 43 candidate. For profession, we have 54 candidate. Satisfactory, 42 candidate and very limited. We got only 5 candidate. So, if I multi-select them, okay. These are the overall pie chart from the candidate by uh, the data of user proficiency analysis. Okay, that's all for reporting. I hand over this presentation to Noatika. Thank you. Assalamualaikum everyone. I'm Noratika and will be your last presenter. As you can see on the screen now, this is the candidate data, which are our actual raw data. Here we have about 200 raw data that we gathered before processing them into our student's grading system. So, for the first column, you can see the ID numbers, name, IC numbers, genders, etc. Here are all the data that have been submitted and save with the results okay we have used formula sum and also formula if based on our data references so we click on the references button it will bring us to our table of band description and program qualification entry it will show the aggregate score from below 100 to maximum 300 and then band 1 to 6 and then the user is it very uh, limited to highly proficient and then entry qualification either they fail or pass next to the table is an upper arrow button which when you click on it it will bring you back to the starting of our candidate data list again then again, you click on the references. Here are all the main buttons that hyperlink to the dashboard, employee personal data, reporting, candidate data, and admission results. Okay, next. This is our logout page confirmation. After all your job is done, yes, you may log out. How do we get to this page? Let me show you an example. When you click no, it will bring you back to your dashboard. Okay, but let's say you want to log out from here. So you can click the log out button and then you are about to log out from the system. So you click yes. So this is the end page of the uni apps. It shows thank you for using uni apps and have a good day. Later on, you can see here on the left is the home button. Click on it and here we are on the home page. You can see the login ID and the VLOOKUP here for every employee ID shown. And it will show the name of the owner too. Okay. And if you click on submit, it will bring you back into the system back again directly. Last but not least is the general inquiries. We have a button for email and if you click on it, it will bring you to your mail. And here you can send any inquiries on System Uni apps. And also, we have provided uh, the official number to reach out directly. And lastly, when you click on Find Us, Ta -da! It will show you the location. Okay. So, in conclusion, it might look just like any other range of data in Microsoft Excel, but there are many features that could massively streamline your Excel experience. So, it's easier as no hard functions are involved. This system could really help to sort and extract the data and also can help to sum all the data in the easiest and fastest way. So, that's all from our uni apps. Thank you.